whatever general that you're working with, whether that be Joseph Johnston, Leonidas, William Marshall, or any of the other world generals, it is important that you get them dressed up right. And that's what we're going to be looking at here. Hi, and welcome to Red Ebony. I am Akayasha. You can call me Aka, and we're going to be looking at gearing up your world general. Selecting gear for your world general can be tricky business. So, before we get right into it, let us go over some of the key points that we need to keep in mind when we're doing our selection. The first thing that we need to keep in mind is what exactly a world general does. A world general will apply buffs to your in-city troops, all of your troops during defense. And you might be thinking, well, duh, Aka, I mean, yeah, we know that's what a world general does. But this very simple and trivial point is something that we often forget when we are going through the selection process. And when you keep it in mind, you understand just how important it actually is. The next thing that we need to keep in mind is that each of the types of troops that we have, ground, archers, mounted troops, siege, all have important stats on defense. And we need to keep those in mind when we're going through the selection process. Now, with the exception of civilization gear, the options for selection are going to be between Achaemenidae and Ares. While each piece of gear might have certain benefits for you to choose it over the other piece of gear, in the case of Achaemenidae, the six piece set attribute of minus 15% to enemy troop attack is extremely significant. And largely because of this one set attribute, the choice for gear selection that we have is going to be fully Achaemenidae gear. All piece, six pieces. You could still choose to put some Ares gear pieces on your wall general, but missing out on this six piece attribute is something that is not going to do your defense any favors. So because of that, it is largely advised that you go with a full Achaemenidae setup for your wall general. The next thing that you need to keep in mind is your general itself. What is the general special skill? What are the general specialties like? You need to keep those in mind. In addition, you need to keep in mind the troop types that your general will be preferentially buffing. And this will impact our choice of gear as well. For the gear selection, you also need to consider special things such as in-city stats and debuffs. So, now that we've gotten through all of those basic things that you need to remember, let's move on to the selection. We start off with the ring. It doesn't matter what anyone has told you, it doesn't matter what you've heard, the most important piece for your wall general is the courageous Achaemenidae ring. And that is largely because the ring adds an additional range bonus for your siege troops. Your siege troops are very important for defense and that increased range means that they can start attacking the enemy earlier than when the enemy can start attacking you. It is a very important stat to have. Okay. So we have the ring on our general now. Next up, let's take a look at the boots. We have to choose between the courageous Achaemenidae boots and the fearless Achaemenidae boots. As we mentioned earlier, each troop type has specific stats that are important on defense. On the fearless Achaemenidae boots, we have range troop HP, mounted troop HP. Mounted troop HP is an important stat for mounted troops on defense. However, Range troop HP is not that important. We have enemy siege machine attack, which is a very common debuff that you'll find on almost all Achaemenidae gear. So it's not that special in this sense. We have march speed, which is completely useless for our wall general. So we have one relevant stat on the fearless Achaemenidae boots. When we take a look at the courageous Achaemenidae boots, we have ground troop defense, which is important. We have enemy siege machine attack, which is not very important. We also have enemy mounted troop attack and we have in-city range troop attack. So on the courageous Achaemenidae boots, we have three stats that will be relevant for defense. We will go with the courageous Achaemenidae boots. Okay, now that we're done with the boots, let's go on to the chest piece. 
When looking at the courageous Achaemenidae armor, we have first of all two debuffs, enemy siege machine attack which is popping up again, and enemy mounted troop defense. Enemy mounted troop defense is not a particularly important debuff to have. For the buffs, we have siege machine attack and siege machine defense which would be great if you were focusing on buffing your siege troops. For the fearless Akamenide armor, we have enemy mounted troop defense, which is not a particularly important debuff. We also have ground troop defense, ground troop HP, and in-city range troop attack. All these three are very important stats for you to have on defense. So for the armor, we will go with the fearless Akamenide. All right. So far, our selection process has been relatively straightforward. These three pieces were pretty much easy to pick out. However, selecting the remaining three pieces is not as straightforward as you might hope. And for this selection, a lot of the things that we talked about earlier are going to come into play, particularly your general, what the general buffs and your preference of troops. Keeping all that in mind, for these next three pieces, we're going to take a different approach. I'm going to show you what my selection was and give you a bit of the reasoning behind that selection. Hopefully, that can help you as you make your choices as well. So, for the weapon, I decided to go with the Achaemenide Axe. And that's for two reasons. One, being my general and what he primarily buffs. The general I have is Joseph Johnson. He mainly buffs ranged troops and siege troops. I wanted to get more buff for my siege troops, that's why I went with the axe. In addition, when you look at the stats on the axe, my feeling was that it was the most well-rounded weapon in terms of the stats it provides and the debuff that it has. Next, we look at the leg armor. For the leg armor, I decided to go with the Fearless Akamenide for two reasons. The first one being, looking at the selection that I've made so far, I already have two pieces with in-city range troop attack. So, because of that, I did not prioritize getting the Courageous Achaemenide. Instead, I went with the Fearless for the ground troop buff. The second reason being, as I stated earlier, with my general, siege troops are a major focus. So, I went for the siege attack on the Fearless Achaemenide. Finally, for the helmet, this was a bit of a tricky one. The ground HP and mounted HP buffs on the Fearless Achaemenide helmet are quite attractive. However, I decided to go with the Courageous Achaemenide for one main reason, and that was the combination of buffs it has for mounted troop and in-city range troop attack. So because of that, I decided to go with the Courageous Achaemenide over the Fearless. But I'll point it out that it was a tough choice, and I know that a lot of people favor the Fearless Achaemenide over the Courageous. So. This is the full setup for my wall general. And as you can see, we have the six piece Achaemenide set attributes there and done. So if you found the information in this video helpful, do give it a like. The next video that will be coming out in this series will be looking at what kind of refinements that you should do for your wall general. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Thank you, Anaka signing out.